Thank you, Dr. Ritter, for, for mentioning that about those health disparities and, and how real and problematic they are. And Mayor Neal, when you were asking earlier about Black women's role and kind of where we are in all of this, there's a modern role too that we often don't think about as, for instance, the Black mother and the things that we have to look out for today. I have three African-American daughters. My husband is Black. And I am always on high alert when they have to go either to the emergency room or looking for a doctor. For that reason, I'm hyper vigilant, vigilant about making sure that I'm there. Even though I have two of my daughters are in college now, I make sure that they communicate with me if they go to the doctor, because what I don't want is for their needs to be dismissed because we see it too often. A recent survey just a couple of years ago said that 40% of medical students assumed that black skin was thicker than white skin. People have always assumed this has been a problem that black people had a higher tolerance for pain. I could go into story and story and story, but I find myself as the keeper of the health system of my household in making sure that I am my children and my husband's guardian in that way to make sure that they are okay. And then teaching my daughters how to go forth and do that. That's just one of the realities and I don't even want to call it a burden. It is a burden, but it's just it's just what you do. It's a reality. Well, that's the other reality. Uh, there's an Institute of Medicine study that shows that Black men in particular are two-thirds less likely to get pain medication for a broken bone, mm-hmm. for a broken bone. So we are assumed to have so much more pain tolerance and or the physicians are assuming that you want drugs because you are a drug addict that when you have a broken bone, which I've had two, so it's a very painful situation. <laughs> they don't want to give you the drugs. 